Yantif and welcome Chayalim, it's Shnas Hakel and today we are joined by your fellow Chayalim in camps around the world to celebrate this special day of Yud Beis and Yud Gimel Tamos, the birthday and the Chag HaGeula, the day the Free Yudhikar Rebbe was released from prison. There's no better way to start the rally with them with the free the Rebbe's most favorite niggin, the Bainini. But before we start, I want all of you Chayalim, when whichever camp you're in, to sing along. And let's see which camp can sing with the most Chayas. <laughs> We're going to travel the world, but we're going to start right here in Crown Heights. Kan Siva Hashem Esabracha, from the camp in Beis Rivka, we welcome Private Bela Brashevitsky and Sergeant Zelda Cooperman to lead us in the Pasuk of Teira Siva and Chayolim around the world. We want to see the camp who takes off the roof. Where we have with us second lieutenant Shayna Gansberg to lead us in the pasuk Shema Yisrael. Let's hear you. Fantastic! And now back to Crown Heights from Benos Menachem. We have with us Mishki and Rachi Kirsch to lead us in the Apostle Kal Yisrael.
what we have with us, Chai Yizukah, to lead us in the Pasuk, Kal Yisrael.
we have the special schos to hear from our Melech, the Rebbe, an incredible story about the Friedrich Rebbe when he was a young child. What the Pasiron Bikitseri give him, as there is Gagangen in Mark, in Market, in Gas, and not Gesen, Vazea Parisme, Basisach, Mid Gurt, and Schlock, the Zweit Nil. Was wieder gesagt, früher, ihr da seid mir gewähnt, ihr gar ein klein Kind, und das hat getan, ein paar Lissmen, von deswegen, als er hat gesehen, er hat mich schlockt, er hat jeden, hat er sich eingestellt, und zugegangen, und hat gesagt, den paar Lissmen, wie tut er das, als er mir sagt, und er mag ich tun. Der paar Lissmen ist geworden in Kais, und hat er mal reingeführt und mal reingesetzt in Scheer, in Türme, wo dort sich gewähnt hat, finster, der Schädel, und ist er weggegangen. Sein Dick in Türme hat er der Herr, was er in der Winkel, was er gewähnt hat, finster, der Schädel, ist herzlich etwas erkrächt. Und er sich sehr erschrocken, was er mit oberer Gleiber Mond, an der Rebester hielt jeder Rieden und jeder Riedisch Kind, und er der Mond, als er darf es nutzen, die Zeit beweisen, als er viele Dorten in Türme und in der Finsteren Schäde, fiel er sich echt zu, wie ein Riedisch Kind darf sich aufführen, und hat der Pfarr ungeheben Chasen auf Peswenig, die mich schneißen von Tälische Baupe, was er gekannt auf Peswenig. Dann noch ist durchgegangen, eine Weile, eine kurze Weile, was er da wusste, von der ganzen Sache, hat mich nicht befreit und hat bestraft den Palismen, und ich habe sehr gekommen zu sein Vater von Jail und hat erzählt, wo dort er vorgekommen ist, in der finsteren Schäde. Und als er dann noch es gefunden hat, wenn man geht in die Kiel, als in Winkel, gelegen an gebundener Kälbe, wo der Verlissene noch es getracht hat, Bilbo auf Nieden, als er zugegangen wird in Kälbe. Und er allein hat das getan, hat dann der Vater geändert, anrufen, die kann mit Namen sehr. Aber ich habe das gehasert, mich schneist, die nebischen Stäbe. Sie seien dich in demselben Schäde, mit der Kälbe, und da hat man gesehen, den Schiluk, und du bist ein jüdisch Kind, und bist verbunden mit nebischen durch sein Tero, wo das beweist die Richtigkeit und die Ähnlichkeit von einem jüdischen Kind, in dem was er erzählt sich ist, und mich sein Rodem in Abema Oyin, nicht wie der Behavel der Ringe von dem Kälber. Chayalim, that was beautiful! And now we welcome the world's best storyteller, Rabbi Yitzhi Erbs, to tell us the story of Yud Beis Yud Gimel Tamos. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. It was the 14th of Sivan, the year Tov Reish Pei Zion. The doorbell suddenly rang, and the door was smashed open. All right, who here is Schneerzin? Excuse me. Why must you shout? You know who Schneerson is. If you didn't know, why would you come here? If you're looking for me, I am right here. I am certain that you will not disturb me from my evening meal. Mulav, the soldiers are going to stand guard. Put the soldier by every place. All right, uh, citizen uh, Schneerson, uh, let me show you this document here. You have to read this and sign this document that we search your house according to the law. I will not sign this. Fine. Well, let me tell you something now. Rabbi Schneerson, you are under arrest. 
I demand permission to put on tefillin and daven to pray and also that kosher food be made available to me from my own home. But you may take your tefillin, religious books even, paper and pen. It is very hot in here. Lulav, come, let us go downstairs. We'll wait downstairs for the vehicle. Rabbi, after you finish taking care to make your mother quiet, then pack your bags and get ready to go, okay? Come, Lulav, let's go downstairs. Yeah, all right, let's go. Let us take this opportunity before they come back upstairs. I want you to go and send out Shluchim to go to the Kavorim of my ancestors. Go to Rostov and Nyeshin and Lubavitch and Hadic. Now, listen, no matter what, when word gets out that I'm arrested, I don't want that any of our underground activities should be stopped. And you could rest assured that if they interrogate me from today till tomorrow, it won't help. They will never get me to speak. And if Chas V'Sholem, somebody is arrested, and they claim that I revealed their name, then you should know it's a lie. Because nothing, nothing that they have in their power is going to make me talk. Do you understand? I will take the blame for everything and anything. But you must go and borrow money and make sure the Rebbeim are paid. Keep the Hasidus going. Keep the Torah learning going. Don't stop it for a minute, no matter what. All right, we are coming upstairs to get you. All right. Soldiers, guards, come over here, quickly, quickly. You go from the back, you go from the sides, and all around like that. I don't understand why you need to have soldiers standing there with their swords drawn and their rifles. I will come with you. Don't worry. Ah, I am following procedures. Come. All right. Come down the steps. And so, sure enough, they walked downstairs and they went to the courtyard. It was a very cheerful moment. I'll help you, Rabbi. <laughs> you know, easy does it. <clears throat> okay, are you in? Yes, thank you. They started to drive away. <laughs> Driver pulled up. All right, we are here. Outside, Rabbi. Step outside. We are here now at 24 Splerka. Stand and descend from the vehicle. Excuse me, Mr. Nachmanson. Are you going to keep your word what you told me? That I will be allowed to put on my tefillin? Even before entering the prison, you are starting to demand things? Are you oblivious to what your situation is? Do you realize you are under arrest? Do you realize you're going to prison? All right, you are to go down that long corridor over there, straight to the open doors. Along the length of the room stood 10 or maybe 12 armed guards, each armed with a Cossack spike. It's like a spear that was hanging across his back. He had a polished sword in his left hand and a rifle in his right hand. They stood like marble pillars, unmoving, yet their eyes attentively surveyed the entire area. The dreadful, bizarre scene would inevitably frighten any normal person. The Rebbe began to walk towards the administrative office. The Rebbe suddenly heard one of the officials say, Citizen, go sit over there. Here is a sheet of questions. Answer each question clearly. I'm looking at this and I have nothing to write. What seems to be the problem here? I am unable to fill out this citizen's questionnaire since he does not provide any responses, any answers. Hmm. Let me take a look at this. Hmm. You have not answered any of the questions in this form. You must fill out everything completely. There is no other alternative. All I have to state is as follows. I am Rabbi Schneerson, son of the famed Rabbi Schneerson of Lubavitch. I bear the hereditary title of honored for generations citizen. My birthplace is Lubavitch. I studied there at the yeshiva. I lived eight and a half years in Rostov 
and three years in Leningrad. My primary preoccupation is religious study. I'm involved in the philosophical system known as Hasidus. Yes, Secretary. Uh, right as the citizen states. The Secretary gathered all the documents and told the Rebbe to follow her. The clock struck half past four. Please, I'm a religious Jew. Just give me five minutes to put on my tefillin, or even three minutes, please. No, do you understand? No. But the Rebbe realized at that moment he would not have a chance other than this moment while he's walking behind the guard to put on the tefillin. So quietly, the Rebbe began to put the tefillin on his hand first. And after he put the tefillin on his arm, he began to put the shell rice on. And at that moment, the guard suddenly turned around. <gasps> what is this? I told you no, and you're still trying to put on your tefillin? How dare you? I will teach you a lesson. And with that, the guard gave a zets, a punch to the Rebbe, and a push at the same time. And the Rebbe toppled down those metal steps. The Rebbe realized that his belt buckle cracked and part of the metal went into his stomach and he was bleeding. He was in a lot of pain. You will soon see the fine treatment that will be shown to you by the head of the 6th Division. <laughs> Perhaps three or four days in that secluded room with the mice and rats and the slime and the mud will get you to change your mind. You won't be thinking about your religious things anymore. And then, as he sat to rest for a moment, he started to gather his inner strength, grabbed onto a railing, began to pull himself up, and went up step by step until he got to the top. The man or beast called Petya arrived. Don't worry. We will clean you out as you deserve. We will pull you apart bone by bone. Very well then. Betcha, you may return. I'll call you when I need you. At that moment when he was alone with the official of the 6th Division, the Rebbe asked, Please, can I please put on my twillin? No. You may not pray! No way! You just sit over there and you wait until I search for all your things. At that moment, he turned his back to the Rebbe and he faced the table where he was searching through the Rebbeinu Tom Phil, the Sforum that were there, even through the Gartel. And since his back was turned, the Rebbe thought for a moment, Ah, I have a moment where I could put on my tefillin. At the moment the official finished searching the Rebbe's thing, he turned around with a rage that continued to burn. How dare you! And he ran over. I pity you, old man. With your white face and your black lips, it does not look like you will last very long here. We won't have to deal with you much longer. Petya, Petya, come in here quickly. I am finished with this prisoner. The Rebbe extended his hand to take his tefillin. Forget everything. You must remember that you are a prisoner here. Do you understand? If it really means so much to you, then why don't you write to one of the officials? And if he approves, then I'll give everything you want. The Rebbe insisted on sending telegrams to the official. The Rebbe wrote three telegrams, all with the same words. I herewith request to immediately order the head of the sixth section to give me my tefillin, religious Rabbi Y. Schneerson. The Rebbe and Petya continued to walk until they arrived to jail cell 160. In the name of the law, I am commencing a hunger strike until my request for my tefillin 
and religious books is fulfilled. The door was closed. It was already 40 hours into the Rebbe's fast, and not even a single drop of water had entered into his mouth. Suddenly, he heard the locks being opened. And then there was a flashlight that shined right into the room. Then three soldiers came in, carrying rifles. And there were four soldiers outside with drawn swords. The official stared at the Rebbe and then said, Come with us. The other cellmates were crying, with tears streaming from their eyes, as the Rebbe walked through the corridor. I hereby order you to remove your hat, and if you refuse, you will have a bitter end. I will not remove my hat, and I want to know if you know who I am. Who are you? I am the Lubavitcher Rebbe. So? The Lubavitcher Rebbe is not frightened or taken aback by your attempts to intimidate him. In the interrogation room, three men were sitting with a gun resting in front of each of them. Clusters of weapons were all over the room. Their faces all had expressions of rage, and their eyes glimmered with animosity and anger. The Rebbe turned to the interrogators and said, This is the first time I have come into a room and not a single person has arisen from his place. Do you know where you are? Sure, I am in a place that does not require mezuzah, like a stable or a bathroom. Silence! Do you see this toy that I'm holding this gun? With this gun, I have silenced many people and made many people talk. Now, do you understand? Listen to me very carefully. Your toy, your gun, can only frighten someone who has many gods but one world. But I, who have one god and two worlds, am not frightened by your little toy. Silence! Silence! Do you see this arm extended before you? From the time I was 14 years old, it has been engaged in the sacred task of annihilating those such as yourself. We are all aware that you have used your influence to create a network of Hadorim and Yeshivos and other religious institutions throughout the USSR. There is no prohibition in Soviet law against Hadorim and Yeshivos. Kalinko, the chief state prosecutor of the Soviet Union, has explicitly declared no official law has ever been made in the Soviet Union against institutions of religious education. With whom is it incumbent to comply? Kalinko or Lulav? But, 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 but in another 24 hours, you will be shot! It was now three full days that no food or water had passed the Rebbe's lips. Finally, on Friday afternoon, a Jewish member of the GPU brought the Rebbe his tefillin and holy books, and the Rebbe told him, I will not eat prison food. Only food that is brought from my house will I eat. The Rebbe immediately began to put on his tefillin, and he began to daven. A short time passed, and the prison guard brought three whole chalas from the Rebbe's house for the Shabbos meals. Finally, on Rosh Chodesh Thomas, at 11 o'clock in the morning, a guard entered the room and said to the Rebbe in Russian, Stavai! Stavai! Stand! The Rebbe responded in Yiddish, Nein! If you do not obey, we will beat you! The Rebbe replied, No, no! The guards beat the Rebbe and left. Later, another group of guards came in with Lulav. Rebbe, why are you so stubborn? 
I have come to inform you that your sentence has been lightened. If you are told to stand, stand! But the Rebbe remained totally unresponsive. He did not answer them. And the guards continued to pummel the Rebbe, and they beat him. And again they left. After some while, a fourth set of guards came to the cell and told the Rebbe to proceed to the office. And there he was informed that a sentence had been reduced. You will be freed from prison and sent for three years in Kastrama. As the Rebbe approached the table, he observed his case documents were lying there. He noticed that on the first line, there was something crossed out. Looking closer, he noticed it was nullifying his official death sentence. The next line stated that the Rebbe should be sent for 10 years to Slovakia. And next to it was written, yet yeah, no. And on the last line was written, three years, Kastrama. Then the Rebbe thought to himself, today is Thursday. And he asked the guard, excuse me, when will the train arrive in Kastrama? On Saturday. Why? On Shabbos? No. And I will not take that train. And the Rebbe remained in Spalerka for a second Shabbos. On Sunday, on Gimel Thomas, the guard finally said to him, You have permission to return home for six hours. The Rebbe came home at a time when his family thought that they would never, ever see him again. And before long, the Rebbe arrived at the station, and from the step of the coach, the Rebbe said a sicha, Yehi Hashem Elokeinu Imonu, Hashem Yisbor Zolzayn Unvetzayn Mit Uns. As the Rebbe finished his sicha, the train left and traveled for 24 hours. It finally arrived in Kastrama. Bor Hashem, in just a few days, on Yud Beis Thomas, the Rebbe's birthday. Rabbi, I regard this as a personal privilege to tell you that you are a free man. The Hasidim and all the Eden, they celebrated without end. Their joy knew no boundaries. And this Yoim HaGeula is celebrated Till this very day. Chayalim, this has been unbelievable. But how can we end without singing the special niggin for Yud Beis and Yud Gimel Tamos? <laughs> Let's hope that the inspiration will inspire us all to have mysterious nefesh in our own life, to take on to be better chayolim, and do what the Abishta wants, and ultimately bring Mashiach now. We did the 12 sukkim, we asked Hashem for Mashiach, and now our final weapon, tzedakah.
each and every chayil will get a coin of ten to give to tzedakah. And as you give it to tzedakah, have in mind, G'dayla tzedakah shemekarevis esagola. And maybe this be the last and final rally in Golos. And the next rally, all the camps united as one in the base of Mikdash Ashlishi for the greatest rally ever. Take it from a yad, mamash now! <laughs>